Good day, future lawyers, and today we're back with a new video about jurisdiction. Let's get started. As provided in Section 9 of Batas Pambansa Bilang 129, an act reorganizing the judiciary, appropriating funds, therefore, and for other purposes, the Court of Appeals shall exercise one original jurisdiction to issue writs of mandamus, prohibition, certiorari, habeas corpus, and co-waranto, and auxiliary writs or processes, whether or not in aid of its appellate jurisdiction. 2. Exclusive original jurisdiction over actions for annulment of judgments of the regional trial courts. And 3. Exclusive appellate jurisdiction over all final judgments, decisions, resolutions, orders, or awards of the regional trial courts and quasi-judicial agencies, instrumentalities, boards, or commissions, including the Securities and Exchange Commission, the Social Security Commission, the Employees' Compensation Commission, and the Civil Service Commission, except those falling within the appellate jurisdiction of the Supreme Court in accordance with the Constitution, the Labor Code, as amended, the provisions of this Act, and the Judiciary Act of 1948. The Court of Appeals shall have the power to try cases and conduct hearings, receive evidence, and perform any and all acts necessary to resolve factual issues raised in a. Cases falling within its original jurisdiction, such as actions for annulment of judgments of RTCs. b. Cases falling within its appellate jurisdiction where a motion for new trial based only on newly discovered evidence is granted by it. The Court of Appeals has the power to grant and conduct new trials or further proceedings. Jurisdiction of the Sandigan Bayan The Sandigan Bayan has jurisdiction over the following violations of Republic Act No. 3019 or the Anti-Graft and Corrupt Practices Act as amended and Chapter 2, Section 2, Title 7, Book 2 of the Revised Penal Code which defines and prescribes the penalty for bribery where one or more of the accused or officials occupying the following positions in the government, whether in a permanent, acting, or interim capacity at the time of the commission of the offense. Officials of the executive branch occupying the positions of regional director and higher, otherwise classified as grade 27 or and higher of the Compensation and Position Classification Act of 1989, specifically including provincial governors, vice governors, members of the Sangguniang Panlalawigan, and provincial treasurers, assessors, engineers, and other provincial department heads, city mayors, vice mayor, members of the Sangguniang Pangnonsod, city treasurer, assessor, engineers, and other city department heads, officials of the diplomatic service occupying the position of consul and higher, Philippine Army and Air Force colonels, naval captains, and all officials of higher rank, Officers of the Philippine National Police while occupying the position of Provincial Director and those holding the rank of Senior Superintendent or higher. City and Provincial Prosecutors and their assistants and officials and Prosecutors in the Office of the Ombudsman and Special Prosecutor. Presidents, directors, or trustees, or managers of government-owned or controlled corporations, state universities, or educational institutions, or foundations. 
Members of Congress and officials thereof classified as grade 27 and up under the Compensation and Position Classification Act of 1989. Members of the Judiciary without prejudice to the provisions of the Constitution. Chairman and members of constitutional commissions without prejudice to the provisions of the Constitution and all other national and local officials classified as grade 27 and higher under the Compensation and Position Classification Act of 1989. Other offenses or felonies, whether simple or complex, with other crimes committed by the public officials and employees mentioned in subsection A of this section in relation to their office. Civil and criminal cases filed pursuant to and in connection with Executive Order Numbers 1, 2, 14, and 14-A Series 1986. In case private individuals are charged as co-principals, accomplices, or accessories with public officers or employees, including those employed in government-owned or controlled corporations, they shall be tried jointly with said public officers and employees in the proper courts which shall exercise exclusive jurisdiction over them. Jurisdiction of the Supreme Court under Section 17 of Republic Act No. 296 or the Judiciary Act of 1948. The Supreme Court shall have original jurisdiction over cases affecting ambassadors, other public ministers, and consuls, and exclusive original jurisdiction in petitions for the issuance of writs of certiorari prohibition and mandamus against the Court of Appeals. In the following cases, the Supreme Court shall exercise original and concurrent jurisdiction with the Regional Trial Court. 1. In petition for the issuance of writs of certiorari, prohibition, mandamus, coaranto and habeas corpus, and 2. In actions brought to prevent and restrain violations of law concerning monopolies and combinations in restraint of trade. The Supreme Court shall have exclusive jurisdiction to review, revise, reverse, modify, or affirm on appeal as the law or the rules of court may provide final judgments and decrees of inferior courts as herein provided in 1. All criminal cases involving offenses for which the penalty imposed is death or life imprisonment and those involving other offenses which, although not so punished, arose out of the same occurrence or which may have been committed by the accused on the same occasion as that giving rise to the more serious offense regardless of whether the accused are charged as principals, accomplices, or accessories, or whether they have been tried jointly or separately. 2. All cases involving petitions for naturalization or denaturalization and 3. All decisions of the Auditor General if the appellant is a private person or entity. The Supreme Court shall further have exclusive jurisdiction to review, revise, reverse, modify or affirm on certiorari as the law or rules of court may provide final judgments and decrees of inferior courts as herein provided in 1. All cases in which the constitutionality or validity of any treaty, law, ordinance, or executive order or regulation is in question. 2. All cases involving the legality of any tax, imposed, assessment, or toll, or any penalty imposed in relation thereto. 3. 
all cases in which the jurisdiction of any inferior court is an issue. 4. All other cases in which only errors or questions of law are involved, provided, however, that if, in addition to constitutional, tax, or jurisdictional questions, the cases mentioned in the three next preceding paragraphs also involve questions of fact or mixed questions of fact and law, the aggrieved party shall appeal to the Court of Appeals, and the final judgment or decision of the latter may be reviewed, revised, reversed, modified, or affirmed by the Supreme Court on writ of certiorari and 5. Final awards, judgments, decisions, or orders of the Commission on Elections, Court of Tax Appeals, Court of Industrial Relations, the Public Service Commission, and the Workmen's Compensation Commission. All right, so we've been productive together. Well done, future lawyer. See you next time. Bye.